Romans in the 14th chapter. One of Romans 14, I want to start reading in verse number 10 of Romans 14. By why, by why dost thou judge thy brother? Or why dost thou set at naught thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. For it is written, as I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. So then, every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. Let us not, therefore, judge one another any more, but judge this rather, that no man put a stumbling block or an occasion to fall in his brother's way. I want to share a thought with you this evening on stepping stones or stumbling blocks. Let's pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for this evening, Lord. It is of our utmost desire that none of us stumble in our walk. But here in the text this evening, our minds and our hearts are reminded that others are watching us. That our walk is more than just our personal walk. And that there's consequences and decisions and effects of every step we make along the way. Lord, I pray that you'll be with us here this evening as we go over this text, Lord. Feed us from your word. Challenge our hearts this evening. In Jesus' name, amen. Starting again here in verse 12, he says, So then, every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. Let us not therefore judge one another anymore. Last week, we, well, I shared with you really my burden of how I'm already looking forward to 2023. Last week, I talked about how I want to go into 2023, reminding myself that I serve the God of the impossible. That is the God I serve. But I also have pondered even more here lately and been praying even more here lately that going into 2023, I want to be reminded with every decision that I take and every step that I take for the Lord that it has consequences, not only for my own walk, but that other people are watching me. There's other people watching how I serve the Lord. This here in verse 12, when he says, so then, or even in verse 13, when he says, let us not therefore. It all goes back to the same reason. For this reason, for this cause, so then, because of this, because of what? Because of the fact of what it says in verse 10. For we all shall stand before the judgment seat of Christ. For this reason, for this very cause, so since we're all going to stand before God, since we're all going to have to give an account for our own decisions, let's stop judging one another and how they walk their Christian life. And more importantly, should we take a step back from judging one another and how other people are living their Christian life, and let's focus in even more and determine within our own hearts that we will not put stumbling blocks before one another. You see, that's the difference between a stepping stone and a stumbling block. A stepping stone is mindful of the person who's walking the past footing. A stumbling block could care less about the person who's following behind them. Here in this text, when he puts this word stumbling block, that is where we get from the Greek, it's actually called scandalon. It's where we get our word in English, scandalize. It means scandal. But in the Greek, it brings you back to a whole nother thought process because its root is the word scandalon. This root is the root, when you look at it, it is the actual place. It is the moving part of a trap in which bait would be placed upon. 
So when he says, let's not be a stumbling block, he says, let's not bait the moving part that draws people's eyes to something. So as soon as they bite it, they find themselves trapped in your sin along with you who's trapped in your sin. Let's not be a stumbling block to others who walk our Christian path. Not long ago, our nation was in riots. It seemed like it was riots on every side. This building being burned, that building being burned. And in the midst of all of this, many people in the nation began to get upset because as they were rioting, they began to burn the American flag. As they were burning the American flag, people began to get upset. There were videos of people running into these crowds that were rioting and were snatching up flags that were burning and putting them out and running out of the crowds. They was doing all of this just to save the flag. People in this video was standing to the side and saying, I don't even understand why you're getting so upset. It's just a piece of cloth. Which in my mind says, if it's just a piece of cloth, why did you pick it to burn it? But they were burning this flag. This flag represents our country. It became so important. It became such a big issue, this burning of the flag, that it ended up before the Supreme Court. When, when a person burns the flag, it is, in effect, defaming the nation by burning a symbol. A burning cloth represents a burning country. It's the principle of the matter. This had the people involved in the riots, who weren't even involved with the riots, up in arms, and it turned violent. And so it is that we live in this country, and yet our citizenship is of another. And when we lay stumbling blocks before other believers, it is alarms being set off among the Christian community that the kingdom that we were called to help build, we are trying to burn down. When we lay stumbling blocks, it is the same thing. We are defaming the kingdom in which we're supposed to go to. But we're saying that this walk doesn't matter. Stumbling blocks hinder people from walking close to the Lord. They derail us. They cause us to lose our focus. And so it is when we choose to live in sin, when we choose to promote sin, when we choose to handle each other wrongly, when we choose to handle ourselves in a manner that we know it would bring offense to others, what we have done is committed ourselves to laying out stumbling blocks for other believers. We are professing and burning our spiritual Christian flag. The Christian faith has even taken a turn in the last five years. People have set out to, set, set out to change how they live their Christian lives. They've clothed it in this new style. They've clothed it in this new thought process. They have tried to sanctify their sins and cover it up in this new thought process, what they're presenting to the world, which is not new, that they have liberty in Christ. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 13 is one of their go-to verses. For brethren... Ye have been called unto liberty. We have this new freedom, they say. We have this freedom in Christ. We're no longer under the law. Of course we're not under the law. We have liberty. Of course we have liberty. But they always seem to forsake the last half of that verse. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. Meaning that if your liberty is offensive to another brother, you cannot possibly serve one another in love. You're only serving one another in offense. This is why we're to be mindful in the decisions that we do. This is why we're to be mindful in, in the decisions that we make. And now listen, not every decision that we make 
that pro pro uh, produces a stumbling block is unbiblical. Matter of fact, when Paul was dealing with the Corinthians over me, that was being offered up to idols. When he was going through that with them, he, was eating wrong? No. Was eating meat wrong? No. But when it caused offense in another, he refrained from the meat. Matter of fact, if you go on to verse 20 here in, in the 14th chapter, it says, For meat destroyed not the work of God. All things indeed are pure. Well, that's pretty simple, right? Meat, meat is no, of no harm. It's pure. It doesn't destroy the work of God. You're not going to go to the meat counter at Kroger's and wreck your ministry. That's not, that's not how this works. But he says in the last part of verse 20, but it is evil for, uh, it is evil for that man who eateth with offense. Ah, it's evil to eat meat and to participate in eating of meat in front of others who will gain great offense from this matter. You say, well, they're just a weaker brother. I have liberty. But that's not what the scripture lays out for us. We are laid out that we should always be mindful of creating an offense. We should always be mindful of causing someone else to have a stumbling block put before them. We are no longer advancing the kingdom of God. We're no longer advanced in the kingdom in which we are called to build. When we exercise liberty, that breaks other people down. Now, they say, even with this burning of the American flag, it went all the way to the Supreme Court. You know what they said? You can't burn the American flag. Even in this world where people are hanging their jackets and their hats upon this newfound liberty that they have in Christ to do things that the word of God speaks against. It went all the way to the Supreme Court of Heaven also and found out that it, not ought, it ought not be so. But yet, this is where they live. Do you know, do you know that in the word of God, in the New Testament, that there is no sin None at all that has more woes pronounced against it than the sin of stumbling. There's none. Matter of fact, when our Lord addresses this matter in Matthew chapter 18 and verse 7, he says, Woe unto the world because of offenses, for it must needs be that offenses come. Now, if you stop there, we say, okay, well, woe unto the world because the world is what offends us. Woe well unto the world, but he also even implies to us that offenses, they must come. But in how he closes the verse, but woe to that man by whom the offense cometh. Woe to the deliverer of the stumbling block. Woe to the one who causes the brother or sister to trip and stumble along the way. Woe unto them specifically. Matter of fact, in the book of Matthew, the Lord even goes further that it said it would be better for one to tie a millstone to his neck and to cast himself into sea than to offend one of his children. Offenses are serious. Even in our text, in Romans 14, 24, meat destroy not the work of God. All things are pure, but it is evil for one who eateth with, there's the key, offense. God calls it evil. Uh, recognizing this, though, that not all stumbling blocks are events that start with the heart of malice. That's just not so. It's just not the case. You know, there are people who today, um, and this is not for the wine or grape juice debate, but there are people today who exercise what they profess to have liberty in Christ. And so they drink whatever they want, as much as they want, because they have liberty in Christ. They're free from the word of God because of liberty that they have. This is their confession, not mine. And so that they say that they have this liberty. And then they mock those who believe that they should abstain from it. And they mock them and berate them and call them the weaker brother, the, the weaker vessel, not fully understanding that 
There are people who was previously involved in the life of alcoholism who God had delivered. And yet if they fall back into that, woe unto you who brought this stumbling block back in a believer's life. Falling back into alcoholism doesn't mean you lose your salvation. It means you have disrupted your walk with God. Woe unto this. Stumbling blocks are oftentimes, even though it's not professed this way, but it's from a lifestyle that's anti-God, that has lived out before his people. Now, we like to say to ourselves that even in the house of God, this is the last place that we're going to learn about stumbling blocks. The stumbling blocks is how the world tries to prevent us from serving the Lord. Stumbling blocks is what the world puts before me so that I can have a closer walk with God. But remember in Revelations, when the Lord was speaking to the church of Pergamos, remember what the Lord said in verse 14 of chapter 2. But I have a few things against thee. Because thou hast them, there them, that thou hast there them. That means thou hast there in Pergamos, in your church, them that hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat things sacrificed unto idols, and to commit fornication. Balaam, this false prophet, taught, there's a key word, Balak, to put a stumbling block to befriend the children of Israel, to cause them to eat of the things sacrificed to idols and to commit fornication. The first part of the verse really calls out the problem. Who taught Balak? A stumbling block, we would say, is in a physical sense, it would be a piece of wood that causes us to trip, or maybe even a stone that causes us to trip. A stumbling block is something that causes us to change our natural gait. It causes us to change our natural walk. This is what we are not to do in believers' lives. What we do in our life should never cause them to change their gait. Now, we can say whatever we like about our opinions. Well, well I have this liberty, and I'm going to do whatever I want. That's exactly right. You've done what you wanted. You've made this an occasion for yourself. This is, like I said, no sin more is had woes pronounced against it than that of stumbling. Whole chapters have been given to this. Acts chapter 15, Matthew chapter 18, Romans chapter 14, 1 Corinthians chapter 8, all given out to be mindful about how we offend one another. No duty is more extensively given that we give no offense, nor is any sin more condemned than to live our Christian lives intensively and carelessly about giving offenses. So our text says, let us not therefore judge one another anymore, but judge this rather, that no man put a stumbling block or an occasion to fall in his brother's way. The word here, judge, uh, in the Greek word, in the, in the definition, it really brings forth this word determined. It's actually commonly used in the New Testament, if you were, we probably all read 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 2. It says, For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. This word determined is the same word used as Romans chapter 14 and, and verse 13 when he says, But judge this rather that no man put a stumbling block. But determine this rather is what he's saying. But purpose this in your heart. Set your mind to this. Determine this more. Instead of looking at each other, you guys seem to be so anxious to judge each other, forgetting that you're going to stand before God. You seem so excited to uh, inspect every other believer's Christian life and their walk. And yet, what you should really be doing Instead of inspecting everybody's life, you should remind yourself that they will stand before God and you should determine in your heart rather to not make an occasion for them to fall or not be a stumbling block to their walk. 
Because remember, if you do, the woes have been pronounced unto those who cause others to stumble. He said, you've lost your focus here. He says, I have come to another verdict, so to say. Let us not therefore judge one another anymore, but I've come to another verdict. I've come to another conclusion. Here is a judgment that is always valid, so hold on to this. There may be many rules that you have in your life, but this rule right here is with respect to all questions, no matter what it may be. That Paul says that we must arrive at the solemn decision to never judge anyone without exception. On the principle of this, that we will never do anything that will be a hindrance to our brothers and sisters. That is always the right decision. There is no question about it. So we must ask ourselves, why? Why is this so serious? Why is this so spoken against? Why does the Lord condemn this? Why are whole chapters written against this? Why? Why is it like this? I mean, if somebody stumbles, it doesn't say that if you cause someone to fall and stop walking, period. It's a stumbling block. He didn't say if you derail someone's ministry, if you discourage someone so much that they quit serving the Lord. He said if you even cause them to stumble, why is this so important? The reason it is so important is because of the destructive consequences caused by causing other people to stumble. Stumbling blocks cause people to quit ministry. Stumbling blocks cause people to quit serving the Lord. They cause people to be discouraged. I went met with a man this week. He was devastated as he vented to me about harsh words. That's what broke him. He told me that he was in a place in his personal life, a preacher, by the way. He said, I have no desire to read anymore. I have no desire to preach. He, he accounted to me of a time when he was driving in his car on his way to work and turned on preaching and only took about 15 seconds of it and he turned it off. Preacher. Devastated by harsh words. Now, hear what I said. He wasn't devastated by unbiblical words. He wasn't even devastated by untrue words. He was devastated by the harshness in which the words were handled. You see, this alone brought him to a place where he had lost his desire to serve the Lord. And this is the danger even as we handle one another. This is the danger of it all. This was the danger of what he was saying even, um, uh, even in Corinthians about not making this occasion but not eating the meat, but that we should handle each other with love. We should love one another. It brings destruction to the soul, devastating handling, harsh words, causing a brother to stumble. You say, well, they really deserved it. Oh, okay. But this is what we miss from this micro view that God views as the macro view. When we put stumbling blocks before one another, what happens is the gospel message stops going forward. When we discourage other people in the faith, they ain't trying to tell nobody about the word of God. Matter of fact, it went through two people before I ever knew that there was an issue, and this other brother called me and said, hey, you might want to call this brother and go meet with him. He's ready to give up. Which discouraged the other two brothers over harsh words. Not untrue words, not unbiblical words, but harsh words. There are consequences in causing others to stumble. 
So it brings destruction not only to others here in the gospel, but it brings destruction to the soul. To the soul, it causes tension. <laughs> we like to quote that verse that it is good that um, when brethren dwell in unity. But you know what he said? I don't even want to go in the sanctuary. I don't even want to be around them. I don't want this. I don't want that. Is he wrong? Yeah, he's wrong. Is his heart in the wrong place? Yes, his heart's in the wrong place. Does he need to get things right? Yes, he needs to get things right. But why did he even get here? You see, there's two sides to it. It's not whether they react unbiblical. It's what you did when you put the stumbling block there. And so he says that we should not harm the gospel. We should not harm fellowship. We shouldn't cause strife in the church. We shouldn't bring people to a place where iniquity abounds in the heart because this is what happens when they stumble. Bitterness occurs, strife occurs, anger occurs, the gospel's hindered, the ministry's hindered, the kingdom's hindered. People don't want to go to church. What do they tell other brothers and sisters? I don't want to preach no more. And so it travels, and then the next one's discouraged, and the next one's discouraged, and then the next one's discouraged. And all these brothers are given of their time trying to win the brother back over what? Over harsh words. We must be mindful going into 2023 that we are not the one who puts stumbling blocks, not causing people to fall. It's not what the text says. We should not go into 2023 causing brothers and sisters to even disrupt their gait, to disrupt their stride to disrupt how they walk. We're called to be mindful. It's not always in this matter of malice. As I said with Paul in Corinthians, it was a matter of eating meat, but yet it was that of offense. And so it was lawful, but yet it became a stumbling block to others. Paul said, I'm mindful of this. For others, it can be from a heart of malice causing people to stumble, causing people's hearts to break. We just really spoke about this several weeks ago. The brother who fell, he, he, he put on the Facebook, don't let, uh, don't let your walk be discouraged or don't quit serving my great God because of our great God because of the mistakes I made. What does that mean? It means that he fell. And in this moment of falling, he recognized that it was going to disrupt other people's walk. That it was going to hurt their stride. So this, this stumbling block is not always from malice. It's not always from un being uh, something that's unlawful. It, sometimes it's just failing in something. Sometimes it's just having a lack of zeal. Quench not the spirit. Why? <laughs> because when you're full of the Holy Ghost or when you're excited about the things of God and you get around somebody who's bitter and negative and nasty, what happens? Then they're quenched and they're quenched and they're quenched. And by the time you flesh it out with 15 people, you just started feeling better. But the other 15 people, they're burned out because of the stumbling block, because of the way you've approached this. Sometimes it's zeal, sometimes it's prudence, but whatever it is, God has called us to guard our hearts, to guard our walks, not only to, to guard how we walk, but we've been called here to recognize even more that, remember, no matter what he does, he's going to stand before God. No matter what he does, he's going to stand before God. And no matter what I do, I'm going to stand before God. So before you take the blade out, or the ax out and lay it to another brother or sister about their doctrine or about where they stand and about how so much different they are than you and how they're in your mind far away from where they need to be doctrinally. The Lord says, stop that. Put that away. Remind yourself, <laughs> there is a righteous judge. And when we all stand before him, don't be surprised when you find out that you was off on some things too. But in the meantime, the most important thing, the most important thing 
is that we stop judging anyone. By the way, that word there, let us not therefore judge one another anymore. That word judge is different than the second word judge because it's written in the aorist imperative. <laughs> it means cease this immediately. Stop. It's imperative. You got to quit it now. Meaning, in this very moment, don't judge anybody else anymore, period. But determine in your hearts that as you walk your Christian life, instead of looking at them, instead of looking at them, focus on yourself even more because what you do in your personal Christian life could cause other people to stumble in the faith. And when you do that, no other sin has more woes pronounced it against it in the New Testament, even from our Lord, than the sin of causing others to stumble. Let's pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we give thanks to you, Lord, for this opportunity to dig in your word, Lord, to challenge our hearts and minds as we look forward into 2023. May we walk wisely. May we walk thoughtfully, constantly encouraging, instead of lifting up stumbling blocks in front of other believers. May we encourage others to move forward in ministry. May we encourage others to run and not be weary, to walk and not faint. Lord, may we recognize that we, even when others may be wrong, are called to handle each other in love. We're called to be wise in our communication. Lord, I pray that you'll make me a man with a wise mouth, wise in the uh, respect that I don't open it foolishly, that I lean upon you, Lord. May I, from this moment forward, only operate in love with my speech when handling matters. Lord, I give thanks to you for all that you've done. We thank you for your word that encourages us, strengthens us, and sharpens us. Lord, I thank you for, thank you for all those who've gathered here tonight, not for me, but for your word. We give thanks to you for all that you've done in Jesus' name. Amen.